healthy children with the American Academy of Pediatrics on Radio MD. RadioMD.com. Here's Melanie Cole. You want your children to experience the joys of international travel and exposing them to new cultures and languages, and but it can be a little bit daunting knowing what to plan, what to expect. My guest today is Dr. Naveen Marotra. He's a pediatrician in private practice and a spokesman for the American Academy of Pediatrics. Welcome to the show, Dr. Marotra. So when we're traveling with our children, let's just start with travel documents, because even going to Canada now, this has changed amid security concerns. What, we need passports no matter where you're going out of the country, yes? This is the summertime where everybody wants to make travel plans, or they've they've already made them. Uh, They may overlook those travel documents. Um, And every country has their own requirements. So I know in my case, uh, you know, I went to a country where they needed a six-month validity beyond your travel date of the passport, and I only had three months, and I was allowed not to go at the last minute. So you need to look at what the requirement is for that country, and make sure that you have the proper passports, visas, and so on. And you have to start that plenty in advance because sometimes it takes a while to get those things. Of course. It can take anywhere from six to eight weeks or even longer. So, okay, so now I want to jump into this part because right now in the in the feel of the country and what we're all going through, some children are hearing things on the news and they're scared to go to other countries. What do you tell parents that what would you like to tell parents about allaying some of those fears about going to Paris or London amid Brexit? And what do you tell them? Because those are great places to visit with kids. Right. We, uh, we want to make sure that it's a positive experience for these kids. So we have to give them comfort and tell them that there is a lot of security everywhere and that everybody's watching. But going to a country like that is going to enhance their cultural experience. It's going to make them develop as a whole person. They will learn about different, different things when they travel abroad. So it's okay to have that fear, but they also need to ensure that they know that there is enough security to keep them safe and that their parents are traveling with them and they're going to look out for them. And what if they're, what if they're traveling with just one parent? Do you need uh, extra things like a birth certificate to prove you're n- not kidnapping a child? <laughs> Sure. I think you should always travel with all documents. So your birth certificates, um, you know, uh, your health certificates, your immunization uh, history, and so on. Um, but as long as it's, uh, it's an intact family where, you know, you do have custody of the kids, it should not be an issue to travel with just one parent. Now, I, I'm, a, I'm a person, doctor, who travels with the entire medicine cabinet. And when I took my kids to Europe, I, you know, you can't always find everything, just like Motrin or things like that over there. What do you recommend as the medicine box that you bring with? And do you talk to your pediatrician about possible prophylactic antibiotic to bring with just in case there's pink eye or an ear infection or gosh knows what strep throat? Who knows? Kids get everything. Right. So it's critical that as soon as you start making those plans, you talk to your pediatrician. Because depending on the area that you're going to be traveling in, there may be a very basic vaccination requirement, uh, because each country is endemic with certain illnesses. And there may be vaccines that are not part of the routine schedule that you may be advised to take if you're traveling to a specific country. So if you're traveling to Africa or if you're traveling to Asia, there are some special immunization requirements. So one place you can always go is definitely your pediatrician, but also the CDC website can give you, based on the country of travel, where you are going, it'll tell you the requirements and what to look out for. Now, Um, you know, kids are hearing about Zika. And so if you're planning a cruise or you're planning to go to the Olympics or if you're planning to go to any of these countries for summer vacation, what do you tell kids or parents of those kids about the Zika virus and you know, why they should not be afraid of it or what you want them to do, you know, to prevent it. Right. So Zika in itself is is a big uh, can of worms to understand. But the fundamental is that Zika comes from a, it's a mosquito-borne illness, just like uh, malaria, dengue fever, and a bunch of other um, illnesses that we see when we travel abroad. So the most common precaution that a parent should take is try to avoid kids being in a mosquito-infested area. Make sure that they're protected, um, maybe with insect repellent or with uh, leaving their uh, arms and legs covered or sleeping in an area where they're, they've been fumigated with um, 
uh, you know, killing the insects off, not tr- playing where there's a puddle of uh, water or there's a heap of garbage. So all of these are mosquito breeding grounds. You want to try to avoid those areas and have some common sense precautions and just make sure that you look out for your child. So now what about the actual travel itself, Doc? You know, sometimes these trips, especially overseas, are long plane rides. And keeping your kids busy when they don't necessarily be able to use data on the plane. You know, if you've got kids in the 7 to 16-year-old range sitting there, maybe watching the movie, but they don't necessarily they're not necessarily able to use their phones if they're not going to use up too much. What do you tell them about keeping kids occupied and happy during that long trip? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question because I think each kid has their own interest. Um, If their child likes to read, it's great to take a book and definitely read on the plane. Uh, There are a lot of entertainment, um, you know, specific on the plane itself, movies and shows that the kids can watch. Um, Some planes now do have data, but, um, you know, I think... If you get into that habit, you're going to be so technologically dependent, and what we're trying to avoid with our kids, uh, we don't want to replicate on the plane itself. Um, And I think just engaging them and and enjoying that family time uh, that you're going to be with your child. Uh, There are definitely things that you need to do as on takeoff and landing, if you're feeling um, nauseous on the plane. So those are type of things that you can talk to your pediatrician about. Now, let's say once you get to the country and you do run into illnesses, that is where you need to have your medication toolbox that you started to ask about earlier. Um, Your medication box would cover something like, um, you know, antipyretics, meaning fever medication, some uh, possibly cold uh, symptom allergy medications, and so on. Once again, your pediatrician can guide you on that based on specifically where you're going to be traveling. But what I tell all parents is that if your child is ill, you should make sure that you consult a pediatrician in that country because you don't know what's endemic in that country and what you're thinking is the common illness may not be the common illness. So, uh, you know, I think stay engaged with the medical facility. Yes, you definitely do. And do you advise looking up clinics wherever you're going just so you know if you have to go take your child to the doctor while you're there? You know, or do you call your pediatrician overseas and, and say, where do I go? What do you advise about that? <laughs> um, I, I think, yes, your, your pediatrician is your greatest asset. So often I'll get calls because I have a lot of international travelers in my practice, and they will call me from that country of travel and ask me, hey, the pediatrician... I've done that before, you- so I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, they'll call me and say, hey, this is what's going on. This is what they're advising as a treatment. Do you agree? Should I go ahead with it? And uh, so I will go ahead, since I know the child and the family... I can give them advice over the phone, Um, but it is advisable that they go ahead and look at what is uh, around their area of stay. So what is the nearest hospital? What is the nearest clinic? Because you never know. Kids will do the darndest things, right? And they will possibly succumb to or, you know, get some illness here or there, or they may jump off or, uh, and, you know, break something, or they may get a cut somewhere which needs immediate attention. So it should be uh, advised that where you're going to be staying at the hotel, you ask them what the closest medical facility is and research that before you go. The other thing you need to think about is about uh, the cost and payment of these medical services. Does your insurance cover travel? Um, Will they reimburse you for that? Do you need to buy travel insurance? So there's a lot that goes behind the scenes or preparations before you actually do international travel. I think that's so important, Dr. Marotra, and and I I get trip trip insurance when I'm traveling with my kids, especially overseas, because boy, you just never know. But such great advice, and if you missed any of it, you can listen anytime on demand or on the go to RadioMD.com, iHeartRadio, iTunes, or the free TuneIn Radio app. And our expert guests here on Healthy Children are provided by our great friends from the American Academy of Pediatrics. This is Melanie Cole. Stay well. <music> 